Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, I've been having a listen to Simon's interview on the Colin McEnroe show on NPR in the States and um, we'll put up a link to this this um, clip here. I think it's marker two that Simon's bit begins at. Um, and that was great fun as always. Now, um, Simon did a puzzle that Philip Bloomer had recommended to us earlier today um, by Jonas Gleim and it wasn't a Sudoku. I'm going to be doing a Sudoku, but keeping the Philip Bloomer, Philip Bloomer um, thread going, we're going to do a puzzle that Christoph Seliger um, compiled, a Sudoku, to celebrate um, Philip Bloomer's recent birthday. Now, we don't normally do birthday shout outs on this channel, but Philip Bloomer has been a good friend of the channel and very helpful. And frankly, this gets me a chance to do a Christoph Seliger puzzle. So um, that's really the main excuse. As I say, we don't normally do birthday shout outs. So I'm absolutely not mentioning Kevin Frey, whose girlfriend Liz told us it was his 30th birthday today, or Johannes Wingelen, who, uh, whose birthday it was last time we published a puzzle by someone sharing his first name. Anyway, let's uh, let's have a look at Christoph's puzzle for Philip, in which, as I say, he celebrates Philip's birthday, but as Christoph said, the age remains a secret, so we'll never guess what it is. I think. Now, the rules of this puzzle are a little bit strange. The there are four different types of clue, maybe even five. Um, the for the 48s on the top of the grid are um, sandwich product clues. So in their columns, um, between the one and the nine appear digits that multiply up to give 48. Um, the cross clues, if you like, on the left of the grid are, um, these are parity party clues. Now that's a a type of puzzle devised by Philip in which um, normally with Philips you're adding numbers but in this case we're multiplying again the numbers the first numbers that we see in the row until we reach the first change of parity so you could go odd odd even or even 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 odd and you include the first different parity number and again, the product will be 48. And as I say, that's from the beginning of the row. Now at the bottom, we have X sums clues, which again, we're looking at products. They're actually X product clues, not X sums clues. But X is the first number you see. And the product of the first X digits, whatever number is in this cell, is going to multiply up to 48. We also have a killer cage, but it's a product cage. So in this cage, all the digits multiply up to 48. And we have some little killer clues. Now, this time they are sums. So these uh, diagonals sum to 48. So four different types. So uh, a very small print rule set today. But there we go. That's what we've got. Do give the puzzle a try. I have no doubt it'll be entertaining as it's by Christoph. The First link below the video is the puzzle, and I'm going to have a go now. So let's get cracking. Now, where do we start here? Um, not, I think, with sandwich product clues. And I don't think the little killers, I mean, they're quite high, especially for seven cells, but 1734, but the absolute maximum would be 61. So that's a lot of degrees of freedom. This 48, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8 are all the possible digits in it. But there are a various number of combinations, I would think. Um, I don't really fancy starting with the parity party. Let's hope the X sums. I think they're promising. So the number here is the number of the digits looking up this way that we multiply to get 48. So, well, it can't be one. It can't be two, you'd need a 24 there. It could be three, you'd need these two to multiply to 16. That's, that would be eight and two. 
it can't be five because five would be one of the digits and that's going to blow this up. It can't possibly be six because once you multiply even the, well, it, it would be all of six, eight, four, three, two, and one. And that, that product is way beyond 48. So these must actually be three and four. And in the four one, whichever side it is, we've got a four, the other three produce 12 when multiplied together. They must be one, two, and six. So one side it's three, eight, two. One side it's four, one, two, six. So there's two twos involved in that, and whichever number comes out of the box must be the second two. So two must be in one of those two cells. Um, ah, the eight has to be in one of these two, because whichever one is three, two, eight, obviously the eight can't be in those. So one of these is a two as well, whichever way three, two, eight goes. The other one is four, one, six, two. So I think these are the possible digits within the box. Exactly the same this side. And that's giving us a 579 triple there. Because those are the other three numbers. Now, now let's have a look at this column that that's appearing in. Oops, column 5. A 48 product between the 9 and the 1 there. Well, obviously 7 and 5 can't be involved, so 9 must be there with whatever numbers multiply up to 48 and then 1. Um, could be 2, 3 or 4 numbers, I reckon. don't think it can be 5, 6, 24. No, 5 is too many. That's quite a lot of latitude though, so I don't quite know how to use that. Right, but we've got stuff in the bottom row, so let's have a look at this. <coughs> parity party idea and now we've got to surely start with two odd numbers only one of those factors of 48 in the puzzle is odd no one and three two of them are odd but they're not a lot of use if you even multiply one and three you still need a 16 and that can't appear so in both of these rows we must start with at least a couple of odd, a couple of even digits, and then have a three or a one following. So it's tempting to guess that it's four even digits, uh, three even digits, and then a three, because we obviously can't go to that cell. But it could just be six, eight, and a one, I guess. Oh, in fact, yes, in this row, we can't use three or four. We can only use one, two, six, or eight. So it's got to be six and eight. The two can't come into that. This one has to be six, eight, followed by a one. Okay, and that means this cannot be six, eight, followed by a one. Up here, we're going to have to have, oh, I could also have noticed that we needed an eight there because of eight and eight by Sudoku. Anyway, up here, we're going to either get to a one there with three numbers which would be all even they would have to be uh, not eight three and two so six to get the three in it yeah six two and four so four two six one or eight two three and that can't have the one so these are both even, so four two. It would have to be. I'm just going to put in the two four six possibilities with a one coming next. That one couldn't be four or eight two one. No, eight two three is what I said. That can't be a one, obviously. Right. So we've got all that as possibilities. Ah, and of course, column three is another. This is column one. Okay, I'm going to start with column three because we've got the one. This is a sandwich product clue. So, looking up from the one, we're going to get numbers that produce 48 multiplied together and then nine. I don't think nine can be this far away. You'd have to have five numbers and we've ruled, it, ruled that out. So nine is in one of these two cells, definitely. If it was in that one, this would have to be six, eight, 
and that's not possible. They're already down here. So nine is in this cell. Um, right, so these are three numbers. They could include three. They, they don't have to be even. But multiply to 48. Do we know what they are? Um, 382 would have to have the 8 here. Um, that would be the only set that would involve 3. Otherwise, we're looking at 6. Um, 6, 2, 4. And that would have to have the 6 here. So either 6 or 8 is there. It could be 6, 2, 4, or what did we say? 8, 3, 2. So there must be a 2 here, and either 3 or 4. That's ruling a 2 out of this one. I don't know that this is taking us much further, although that 6, 8 pair is interesting. I don't know. Feels interesting. Not sure. Now, what have we got along here? 6, 8, 1, 3, 4. Ah, and in this cell, we need a multiple of 48. We've got 2, 5, 7, 9 left in the row. That one has to be the 2 with the others from 5, 7, and 9 going there. Now, uh, no, I don't know. 24, I think there are, very, there are a couple of possibilities at least. Um, okay, how about this column for the sandwich? Now, we're gonna need, we're kind of using up even cells at a rate of knots in this column. So, that's not in the sandwich, six or eight. So the sandwich isn't just two cells, because it would have to be six, eight. So it's at least three cells. Does it, if it didn't have the four, yeah, it could be eight, six, one, including that. So I don't think, I can't place the one and the nine. Can I? can't see a way to do it. Um, I don't know, it just f maybe. No, I, I don't want to spend too much time on that. Oh, it can't use the 8 and the 6, so it can't be 8, 6, 1. Right, yes, remember that. So could it be 3 cells? If it was 3 cells, it would have to have 2 even numbers. 3, 1, yeah, any any sum needs two even numbers. So they'd either have to be here and below, or it would have to include all three. I think that may be the most likely. I don't know. I'm not going to focus too heavily on that, because I'm not sure I can do the maths there. Let's have a look at this first of the little killer clues because that one is quite low. So what's the maximum we could have along here? One, six, nine, that's 16. Nine there, 25. Eight, nine is 42. Oh, and nine there is 51. There's not that many degrees of freedom. There's only three. And that means this cannot be a two where the maximum was a nine, that would be too far away. Okay, so I can place the two. Ah, and that's giving me this sum. Right, this one is now the 3, 2, 8 one. This sum is the 4, 2, 1, 6. But, I, oops, I do not know the order of the 1 and the 6, I don't think. Ah, that 2 decides there's 2 here. Um, let's take out the two possibilities. I'm going to take out the corner marks there as well. That also is inappropriate. Now, ah, and one in one of those means that's not a one. So the parity party here ends in the three. That's interesting. That is helpful. Right. 16 is made up of two and eight there. So let's get rid of the fours and sixes. That three is looking at this cell. So that's a four. The sandwich here is 4 times 2 is 8 times 6 is 48. 5, 8, 7 or a triple at the top of that column. Um, 2, 8, 3, 9, 6. So 4 is one of those two by Sudoku. Uh, what have we 
we've got going across here, not much. Six two. Hmm. Now let's go back to this forty-eight clue because that was already very useful. Yes, this can't be a one because there were three degrees of freedom, and that's five below the six. So that's a six. We have to keep these cells near the maximum along this diagonal. So this one could be nine or up to three less. In that case, only nine or seven. This one could be nine, eight, no, not nine, eight is the maximum, seven, six, or five, nine, eight, seven, or six, nine, seven, or six, can't be an eight because of that one. Um, wow, okay, that's useful. Now this one's just too long, nine cells, I don't think we can use that yet. And this one, looks potentially useful because it's the same length but all we've got on it is a nine and originally there's 13 degrees of freedom it was because we got a one there that this one became useful right so we've done those clues we've, we've done the x factor clues we've done the parity party clues oh, i still think i ought to be able to conclude whether this is a one or a nine how could it be there? We would have to have um, two, eight, three. I'm looking to see if, if there was a one or nine here and we had a sum below it. Ah, actually no. Here's a reason why not. We've written into this box allowing for the pair two, eight, three, nine, six. Four is in one of those cells. These cells are made up of one, five, and seven. So although one of them can be a one, one of them has to be a five or a seven. So the, the, the factors can't include all of them because one of them would be a five or a seven, which would ruin it. So, in fact, if the one was here, the nine would have to be above it. That's just not going to work because that would have to be a five or a seven and there's not enough below. Yeah. So the one, oh, well, I don't know that one of these is a one, but one can't be down here. One can't be up here because it would need nine down here. This one is a one. Wow, that is confusing. Right. So nine has to be up here and then four times that times that are going to be 48. So this has to be a 2, because otherwise we've got to 32, which is not a factor, and that's a 6. Brilliant. Okay, 1, 2, 3. This is now an 8. Um, that 6 has determined that this is an 8, and that's a 6. 1, 2, 3, 8, 6, 4, 9. There is where it has to be by Sudoku. Five, three, and seven are the remaining numbers here. One, two, three, eight. Mm, these could be from four, five, or seven. Is that going to play into this clue yet? Oh, maybe I should focus on this first, because I, I mean, I don't think this is limited much. That the these could both be seven, so at the worst we've only taken four off 13 degrees of freedom, which seems like an awful lot. This can't be eight anymore though, by the way, because of that eight. I should never have allowed it to be eight anyway. Now nine, and then some factors making 48, and then a one. But five, seven are gone, so everything else in the column could be. Um, if 8 was in it, we'd have to have either 8, 6 or 8, 6, 1 or 8, 3, 2, 1 and 8 doesn't have to be in it. Oh, there's a lot, isn't there? There's a lot of ways of getting there. Um, 6, 4, 2 or 6, 4, 2, 1. Now that doesn't seem all that profitable to me at the moment. 
So, done the parity. We've done the first two sandwich clues, but not this one because there seems to be a lot of possibilities. Um, maybe I'm missing some Sudoku fact. One has to be in one of those two cells. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something here. Let me just think about this again. It doesn't have a two in the first three, but I don't think that rules it out from having a two up here. It's not, I don't think this is straightforward actually at all. Right, let's try one of these is a nine. That's not very interesting. These are from one, three, five, and seven. Ah, so that's one or three. Can't be four, six, or eight. Um, right, if that was a one, these two would have to multiply up to 24. That could still be 8, 3, or 4, 6. Might as well fill in the possibilities. If this was a 3, though, we'd already have 6. These would have to be 8 and 1. No, that's not possible. Because both 1 and 8 are used there. We can't have another 2 because there's a 2 there. Right, so this can't be 3. This must be 1 wasn't what I was expecting, but fair enough. Now they're either 8, 3 or 4, 6. I don't see how to tell which at the moment. This is 3, 5 or 7. Still got to get 4 into the row somewhere. Hmm. Not quite seeing how to do that. Two and one. Maybe I do need to look at this. There's just so much though. The maximums are, I'll put the maximums in the corners. Eight, nine, eight, nine. That's already 34, 43, 50, 57. It's not as much as I thought. It's still nine degrees of freedom though. So. That's far too many to rule out any individual cells. Um, hmm. One of these must be a two by regular Sudoku. Um, two, one, 17, 19, 21, 21. That's beginning to get interesting. Another 27. No, I mean, they can be huge at the moment. There's not. There's not enough restriction there to really get anything done. Um, and this is seven or nine. That's just by Sudoku, I think, that that's either of those possibilities. I can't see why it shouldn't be either of those. I suppose five and seven have to be in amongst those cells because they can't be in the 48 sum, but that's not particularly powerful. Oh, this can't be six anymore, um, but that's not removing a degree of freedom because the maximum is still possible there. Let's just check the sum again. 16, 25, 33, 42, 51. Yep, still three degrees of freedom. Um, Wow, it's hard to move forward with. Let's keep let's keep studying it, seeing if anything can work itself free. If that was a seven, these oh no, that that is the one on the on the. If that was a seven, these at best could be five. That would take away two of the degrees of four of the degrees of freedom. Ten, nineteen, twenty-eight, thirty-six, forty. 553. Now there's still plenty left. Have I missed a clue somewhere? Don't think so. Even that could still be a two. Right, it's got to be, it's got to be in this column, hasn't it? The nine and a one somewhere that can't be all the way at the top, or these would be 
2, 3, 4, 6, 8, which is too much. In fact, what do they multiply up to? 8, 6, 4, 3, 2, 48 times another 24. So we have to remove 24. Well, have, have product of 24 as the outies, but that could be two or three cells. Ah, so this is a possibility for the one. Maybe the one can't be on the diagonal. If that was a one, eight, nine, one is 18, 27, 36, and two sevens is 50. Oh, it would be very limiting, but it wouldn't be crucial. Oh, but the two has to be either... Did we decide? Yes, since the outies have to... Right, I had misunderstood this. Since the outies up here have to multiply up to 24, the one is not in the product. So we're looking at, and the two's not in it either because they have to be two digits. Let me just check my math. Eight times six is 48. Four times three times two is 24. Yes, the outies have to multiply up to 24. They must be at least two digits. The one is either here or here. I'm just going to corner mark that so I remember. Um, and we've either got six, eight here with a one here, or these make 24, these make 48. But the two would have to be in the two making 24, and that's not possible. So one is not here, one is here. Right. That's taken ages. I'm sorry. That's probably very accessible for those of you who are mathematicians and able to think about those factors more straightforwardly than I could. Right. That's not an eight. In fact, we have a two, four, three quadruple there. And now the maximum for this cell is four. And that's getting more interesting. 17, 21, 30, 39, and 14 is 53. So we've only got five degrees of freedom now. That really is narrowing. Let's see what else this 168 might have done for us. Eight has made this a four. Um, so that four goes in there. This is now a six. That four makes this a five, seven pair. It puts four here. Let's take out the pencil mark. Five, seven pair, so this is a nine. Oh, that's on this diagonal, but it hasn't removed any degrees of freedom. That is not a nine, though. One of these is a four. Oh, the nine is there, sorry, is the pencil mark. Ah, and that pencil mark is now reduced to seven because nine and eight have gone. Right, now the degrees of freedom, 24, 28, 37, 44, 51, are only three. So these two, this cannot be a seven because it would have made both of these five at a maximum, and that's too much. So that is a five. That's a seven. Five is there. I don't think this can come down to a three either, because that would be too little. Let me just check that. Three, 10, 19, 26, 30, 39, 47. Yes, that's a seven. That's lovely. 14, 23, this is really clever. Um, so now the maximum, oh, it's still 34, 43, 51, three degrees of freedom. So this is eight, seven, or five. This is, oh, this can't be nine anymore. Two of the degrees of freedom have gone there. Um, that is seven or six. This is eight or seven. This can't even be two. We've only got one degree of freedom left. I'm going to do the maths on that yet again. Sorry. 21, 30, 34, 41, 49, yes. This can't be a six, so it must be the maximum seven. One of these is one too many, but I don't know which one. Oh, the maximum is one too many. So one of those is gonna be the minimal number, but that gives us a four in the central box. Five and three, so that central box is done. This can't be five or six. Again, not helping with the degrees. This is two or seven, this is two, seven or eight. That's a triple, oh yes, this can't be seven. 
Still not helping with the degrees of freedom there. Oh, we've got a seven, eight pair here. So this is three, five, and nine. That one can't be three. This is a one, six, seven, triple. Well, that's one or seven. This could be any of them. This is a five, eight, nine, triple. Top one can't be a nine. And look, that gives us a five, seven, eight, triple in the top row. So that can't be seven. Um, this is a one, three pair. This is a four, three pair. This can't be three anymore but I don't know what it is. Let's take out the corner mark nine. We've got a bent triple there. That's not very useful in this puzzle. Five, six or nine there, as far as I can see. So what are the possibilities here? We've already got 25 in the diagonal there. So these add up to 23. They could go nine, six, eight, because that six would use all three degrees of freedom or seven, then it would have to be seven, yeah, seven, nine, seven or nine, six, eight. But both of those are possible. Now, here's the clue we haven't used yet. This long diagonal 48 and how much have we got? 10, 12, 14, 23, 31. So these three add up to 17. What is that telling me? How do we make any further progress here? 17 is a very mid-range number, I think. Um, I might be missing a double or triple somewhere. Maybe that's it. Or even a quadruple or more. Oh, that's not a four. Very little progress from that. Okay, these three add up to 17. What is that telling me? Seven sort of got to be in one of these cells because if that's a seven, that's a seven. So if that's not a seven, that's a seven, that's a seven. So seven is actually limited to those two. Oh, yeah, the diagonal is getting difficult if there's no seven or nine. So if, if this is a seven, this is a nine, Then the diagonal would have to contain, the, by which I mean these three cells. Sorry, I mean these three cells, as, well, that's why I'm calling the diagonal. If that was a seven, this would be a nine. The diagonal would have to contain an eight and two other numbers adding up to nine. So that could be a three and there would be a six on it. The eight would have to be here because of that eight. 8, 3, 6, or 8, 5, 4. Well, they both look possible, annoyingly possible. In fact, I might just pencil mark those in 8, 3, 6, or 8, 5, 4, if that's a 7 and that's a 9. What if it's the other way around? If that's a 7 and that's an 8, now the diagonal, which adds up to 17, has to have a 9 in it. And it can't be 917 because of that cell. It can't be 953 because of that cell which is not on it. It would have to be 962. Oh no, look, if that is a 7, which is what we're saying, that makes that a one and that a six. This, I don't know what, where I'm saying, if it's nine, six, two, this has to be six or two. If that is a seven, that's a one, that's a six. This can't be a six, but it also can't be a two because you'd have seven there and two there, and that would be impossible. I'm certain that that proves Seven there and eight there is impossible. 
because you'd have to have 962 and that can't be 2 or 6 and it can't be 9 either. Yeah, that's fine. Now that, I don't know, it feels a bit bifurcated. It feels like I've kind of stretched the logic a little there, but on the other hand, that may be what's required. Um, I'd be very interested to know if you come up with a better way of cracking that, but what we've established is if that's a 7, then that's an 8, this becomes a 6, this becomes impossible. So that's not a 7. The 7 is here, that's a 9. <laughs> Oh, that's the maximal degrees of freedom. Maybe that's what did it. I don't know. Maybe there was a, a way of comparing what happens here with degrees of freedom. Anyway, those are not nine now. Nine is here in row column seven. That's six. Uh, that's nine. Next one, six. That's five. This is eight by Sudoku. Um, 8 has to be here, that's what we worked out earlier, and it goes with either 3 and 6 or 5 and 4, so that's not 2. 7, 8, 9, 3, 5. Now what else has this given us? That's not 9, that's not 8, that's not 7, that's not 8. Please don't tell me I haven't cracked it at this point. It feels like it should be wide open. That's not nine. Nine is there. All right, five, five, yes. So seven, five pair is done. That fixes that seven, five pair. That seven fixes this seven, two pair. Um, eight, six, seven, five, nine. One of these is a two. That's not all that helpful. Oh yeah, I mean, I've got to check that these um, sums are right. Is that right? Good Lord, I'd forgotten to do that. Sorry about the beeping. Um, 27, 36, 42, 48, that does work. Right, and now this one surely is gonna sort it out. Four sevens already placed, that's 28, plus nine is 37. These have to make 11. Yes, the seven took the degree of freedom. So that is four and seven. And that's all the clues. Oh no, not quite that one used. Almost all the clues used, but seven there. So seven here, five, eight. That fixes that as five, nine, eight. <sighs> Getting excited now, can't help it. Four there, that seven has sorted out the one, seven, six, triple, that hits the corner. Eight, 12, that has to be five, let's, just one more time, 12, 17, 21, 27, 29, 31, 48, yay! The four fixes that, three, four, three, one, six there. Uh, four, six, nine, eight, five, seven, this is a three, obviously, two and one. Yes, we have enough information, thank goodness. Right, the three there, two there, three, and one triple left to do. Two, one, three, and check button. Obviously, it's not checking all the extra rules, but it's checking the basic Sudoku, so that's worked fine. Now, that's taken me a long time, and you may very well have beaten my time on that if you took the clues in a better order, or, or if you saw something. I have a feeling that the beginnings of these... Um, little killers were possibly mutually exclusive in some way that I didn't understand. But let, let us know in the comments what, what you saw in this puzzle towards the end especially. Lovely stuff. Thank you very much to uh, Christoph for mentioning that he'd compiled that and happy birthday, Philip, of course. Hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye. Bye for now.